Welcome everybody to Our Green Acres. I'm Teresa. Thanks so much for coming over today. Today's video is going to be a fun one. It's going to be action packed with a lot of things that we can make that'll be very easy and inexpensive for spring. I'm also going to be doing a fun collab with another amazing YouTube channel and stay to the end because we're going to give y'all an update on the dollhouse. So I hope y'all enjoy the video and as always, I hope you get lots of inspiration and ideas for your home. Okay y'all, let's get started. The first project is going to be a really easy one, but it's going to have so much impact on your mason jars. I'm just going to take some random mason jars that I have or canning jars. Depending on what brand you have, there is one that has a smooth back. Some of them have the embossed brand on both sides, but the ones that are smooth on the back, you can paint those and we can apply some transfers to them. Now I'm using the traditional pots transfer book by IOD, but you can use any transfers that you have. You paint your jars, you know, any color that you want. I had a lot of them that were already painted from my leftover from my daughter, daughter's fall wedding. So I had some in cream and some in white. And I also have some videos on painted mason jars if you want to get some, you know, with a crackle effect and, you know, have different colors for your bases to shine through once you go and you sand over it. I have some videos and I'll try to find those and link those in my description box if you want to go back and watch those. So I'm just taking different transfers and I'm just going over my, my jars very easy project, but like I say, it has such a great impact on your jars. This is a large jar I purchased at Dollar General a couple of summers ago, and I think it was $6, and it's a larger size. But I just turned it around, it had a smooth back, and I'm just applying these really cute little bunny transfers. These are some that I have linked to my Amazon store, but I absolutely love these. I think you get three sheets to a pack. And I also want to mention these cute little candlestick cloches with the birds. I just received those this week from Amazon. So make sure if you're interested in these, I'll have these linked in my store also. But I absolutely love these. Okay, in the next project, I'm going to show you how we can make a really easy no-sew bag. And once we get this bag made, this will be a great piece for us to be, be able to display um, greenery and florals for spring and Easter. And what you want to do is you want to take a piece of fabric and you want to glue it up each side. Now, I'm using a piece of leftover burlap from a coffee bean bag, but you could also use drop cloth or whatever fabric you have on hand. And once you glue it up the sides, and I left enough at the top to where I can fold my, my top over. And you want to turn it inside out. And I also went over it and pressed it really good so there wouldn't be any wrinkles in it. Because what we're going to want to do is we're going to apply a stencil to the front of it. And I'm just going to use a stencil that I ordered from Amazon. And I will have this linked in my Amazon store. And I'm going to go over it with some black chalk paint and put the stencil on the front of it. These bags are so easy to make and they're so cute because once you get them made, you can stuff them with, you know, moss. Uh, you can put your eggs in them, your carrots, your little stuffed rabbits, greenery, florals, so many things and so easy to make. Now, I want mine to look really rustic, so I'm just going to go around the top with some ripped up coffee stained um, flower sack cloth. I'm just going to tie it just to give it a tie around the top and then I'll end up, I'm going to add a little bow to the front of it too. But I'm just taking some plastic garbage bags. I'm just gonna put that in as some filler and then I'll also um, add some pillow stuffing to it. And then once it's made, then you can add whatever florals or greenery you want to. Thank you. 
Okay, the next project, I'm going to show you how we can make some really cute little stuffed bunnies out of some baby receiving blankets. Receiving blankets you can find in some really cute shabby chic type patterns and designs. So I got these at a store called Burke's Outlet. It's kind of like a little mini TJ Maxx. I did link some of these that was, were similar to these in my Amazon store. So, um, you know, if you want to go out there, they'll be in the throws in the pillow category. But I'm just taking a bunny that I have. I think this is a wood bunny from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to use it for my pattern. But you can trace around and make any bunny your pattern. So in any, you know, any design you want, it just depends on, you know, what you have on hand. Now, I've folded the two uh, design pieces to the inside, and now I'm going to go around where I've traced, and I'm not going to cut my my traced um, line out. I'm going to go around it and leave it. So when I go to hot glue it, that can be my guide. I'll have those lines, and I can glue on those. So now that you've got it all cut out, you want to take all your pins out, and now you want to put your design sides to the outside and what we're going to do is now we're going to put our pins back in once you get it all lined up put your pins back in and then we're going to hot glue it all the way around and i'm going to leave an opening at the bottom to where i can add the filler and like i mentioned before you can use that trace line as your guide to apply your glue and that's what I did. I just went all the way around. I followed that little trace line around my bunny until I got to the bottom and I left a hole big enough to where I could get my hand in and I could go up and stuff my ears. Now, depending on what kind of pattern that you use, a lot of times on these bunnies, though, these ears can get kind of tricky. <laughs> so I just kind of had to work it up there as best I could, but I got him all filled up. And then you just want to go in with your hot glue now and just attach the bottom. Now I'm just going to embellish these. I made a couple of these. I made another one that's kind of like coordinating colors. And then I'm just going to add some little a messy bow to one. And then I'm going to make a chopstick bow and give one of them a little, a little fluffy, poofy tail. And these were so much fun to make and so easy. So excited today y'all because I'm collaborating with a very sweet lady Kayla over at Live Oak Nest. Y'all I've become intrigued with her YouTube channel and her blog a while back and her home is absolutely beautiful. She styles it and decorates it a lot like my style. She uses a lot of neutrals and a lot of the really pretty muted colors. The thing about Kayla is a lot of the home decor you will see in her home and she features, she also sells it. She also has a blog. Make sure to go over and follow her YouTube channel. Make sure to go over and follow her on Instagram and also her blog. And like I say, she'll have links to a lot of the home decor and products that she uses to make her home so beautiful. She will have it linked for you and makes it easy for you to be able to decorate your home you know, in a very pretty style and aesthetic. So make sure to go over, check out Kayla's YouTube channel. Make sure to send her, tell her I sent you, send her some love. Make sure to subscribe because Kayla is one of the sweetest people. And I feel so honored when I reached out to her to see if she wanted to do a collab with me. She came back and said yes, and I was so happy. So thank you so much, Kayla. And I hope y'all enjoy going over and seeing all the lovely things that she creates. She does DIYs, and like I say, she also decorates her home so beautiful. So make sure to go over and check her out. Now in the next project, I'm going to show you how we can make some really cute little designs using our clay molds. Now this is the trims mold from IOD, and you always want to go over your molds with cornstarch before you apply your clay. Now I have this clay, um, it is linked to my Amazon store, but you can also use the Iron Orchid Design Clay. I have both of them, and both of them work really well. 
So now I'm, I'm going to use all the trim designs in this mold. But I'm going to start with the larger one, and you just go in and you know, put enough clay in it and get it flattened out. And then I'm going to take a scraper, and it flattens it out really good on your back. Now once you get all your molds done, they should be really easy to pop out. And what you want to do is, once you get them flattened out with your scraper really well on the back, then you just want to put your mold upside down and they will just, you just kind of work them out. You don't want to force them out because you don't want to tear them or anything. But I'm going in now and I'm making the rest of my molds because what I want to do is I'm trying to design enough of these molds to where I can make an egg. And for my egg, I'm going to use a Dollar Tree egg as my pattern. It's going to be like kind of like a cookie cutter. So I need to build up my molds that will be long enough for my egg. So I don't need all of this on the side because my sides are too long. So I'm going to take my scraper and I'm just going to, you know, I just measured it out to make sure I had enough for the sides, now I'm gonna take those and I'm gonna design them and build it up to where it will be the length of my egg. Now you can use, you know, a, a bigger egg. Um, it, you, you can use just about any kind of design you want to. If you want, if you have something that you could cut out a rabbit, and I'm gonna show you a smaller rabbit in just a minute using a cookie cutter. But this project right here is so much fun and you can get so creative with it. So I'm just taking my egg, um, you know, I just pulled it apart and just put it in there. And what didn't um, cut off really good with the egg, it's kind of like a biscuit cutter. <laughs> I just took my scraper and just kind of worked it off the sides with it. And I'm saving my scraps because I'm going to make a little bunny out of my scraps. So um, what you'll want to do when you first start it is put a piece of cardboard up under it before you start. I failed to do that, but I did. I had to put it up over under some car um, above some cardboard because that's going to be my base and now i'm just taking some wood glue and i'm just applying it all to the cardboard and here you can see the little cookie cutters of how i'm going to make the next project and these will be linked to my amazon store and you get a whole pack of different designs but i'm just taking the little rabbit and with those scraps of my clay molds now i'm going to make a cute little rabbit now once you get him get them both applied to your cardboard with the wood glue just let them dry really good and once they dry then you can go in and you can paint them you can put some of your wax on them you know pretty much just embellish them any way you want to and now i painted mine white but and this is the backs of them and you know you can also paint the back of them if, if you want to and two if you've got cracks or anything in your in your clay once they dry when you go when you go to paint um the paint should fill in and you shouldn't see any of those cracks. And once you get it painted, that'll fill in. So I think these turned out so cute. I added a little tail with just some scraps of little lace and fabrics I had, and I added a little pearl handle to it. And the diner's name is California Dreams. Okay, the next project is something that I want to recycle in my home. I purchased this lantern at Burke's Outlet and it had a, a glass panel broke out of it, so I got it on clearance. There is the one side that has no glass. Now it has a galvanized top to it. Now I've had this for several years and I've enjoyed it this color, but now it just, it just kind of blends in and I want it to, I just want to refresh it and I'm going to paint it white. Now I'm going to end up taking all the glass panels out of it and I'm not going to replace them. They were glued in. They were kind of tricky to get out. Once we got them out, I decided not to put them back in. But I just went over the top with some spray paint, spray painted it, and then the bottom I just used some white chalk paint. I lightly went over in a few places and distressed it. Now I think this will fit in with my home decor so much better and I think I'll enjoy it for spring and summertime.
Now the next project is going to be this thrifted frame. You can see somebody purchased it at Ross. They paid $18 for it. I think I paid $1.99. Now it does not have a back to it, so it does not have a stand. I thought it was absolutely beautiful though with that floral uh, design on the front of it. The glass was glued in, you couldn't take it out. So basically I just spray painted the back of the glass and that way the front is gonna be really sleek and slick. So I just painted the back with some white spray paint and I went over the floral, the, um, the front of it with some white chalk paint. Now I'm just gonna add a an IOD transfer to the front of it and then I'm gonna set it up. I'm not gonna turn it long ways. I'm gonna turn it horizontal and hang it or, you know, set it this way. And also you could add a hanger to it and you could actually hang it up also. Now this is going to be a really fun and creative project. What we're going to do is I'm going to take two eggs. Now I got these at Dollar General last year and they come in a pack with some little magic markers where you could color them. But I'm going to take these little eggs and I'm just going to apply some scrapbook paper to them using some Mod Podge. Now I also went over them with some white paint because I thought I was just going to paint them white and embellish them but I decided I wanted to get out my scrapbook paper and Hobby Lobby has a huge selection of scrapbook paper and a lot of times they'll they every other week it's on a sale for half price so you can get a whole sheet of scrapbook paper very inexpensive so i'm just taking assorted pieces of scrapbook paper that i have on hand and i had a sweet viewer that sent me some and i think this is one of the pieces that she sent me and i love this so just you know like i say this is a very creative fun project because you can just you know, create it as you go. And I'm taking my brayer and I'm just rolling it out just to remove any wrinkles or bubbles that I have. And that brayer gives it a really smooth finish. Now, once the Mod Podge um, dried, I just went around the edges and I just took a sanding block and sanded the edges. Now, that was a bigger egg. I got it at Dollar Tree. I did the same thing, just put some scrapbook paper on it. And once I got the scrapbook paper on my eggs, then I'm just going to take some transfers, and I'll have these linked in my Amazon store. They are some beautiful roses. I love these. So I'm just going to apply them, and then I'm just going to take some scraps of some transfers that I have. I, I save all my scraps, and y'all know I love French wording. So, of course, I'm going to apply some French wording to them. And that's what I told y'all about this project, why it's so fun. You can just create as you go and will use whatever, you know, supplies that you have on hand. Now, I also have this um, bunny transfer. It's a package of some bunnies. And this will also be in my Amazon store. But I thought he was so cute. And he goes so well with that scrapbook paper. Now, I just added assorted bows and ties to them. And these just make great, little inexpensive um, decor pieces that you can set out for spring and Easter. Okay, y'all, let's make a cute little tea towel. Now, I purchased these. They come two to a pack at Walmart, and I'm also going to have some in my Amazon store. I, I'm going to fold it because I want to find exactly where the, the center is, and that's where I'm going to apply this cute little bunny transfer. Now, all of these products right here will be in my Amazon store, but this pack right here come with several really cute bunnies. And I thought he was just so cute. So I thought, you know, I've got these tea towels. Let's make, you know, a cute bunny one so I can display it in my home for spring and Easter. So, you know, of course, you just want to apply it. And I always use painter's tape. Once I get it, you know, I centered it up. Once I got it in the center, I just put it some painter's tape to, to make sure it stays in place while I'm transferring it. And you just remove that white backing. Once you get it, you know, adhered to your fabric, you just want to go back over it with that um, transparent front and it'll make it bond really, really good to your fabric. Now I'm gonna take the little welcome 
and I'm going to put it right up under the little bunny and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to apply it, use my little transfer stick and I think this turned out so cute. So now we got a really easy and really cute, you know, um, tea towel. Now we can display throughout our home for spring and summer. Teardrops start to dry Even when the sun begins to shine Again Taking all the advice there is Okay, let's have some dollhouse fun. I'm going to show y'all just an update of where I am on my dollhouse. When I purchased my little dollhouse for $2 at a yard sale, it had some damage. And the damage was the flooring. Some of it bowed in in the middle. So for me to put furniture in it, it was going to be a little bit difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to close up this little opening for the door. I'm going to leave the door on the outside for exterior look, but I'm gonna close it up on the inside so I can have a full wall and make that little room my bathroom. So I'm gonna get Ben to help me because he is a lot better with a ruler than I am. So we are just getting foam board from Dollar Tree. We're gonna go through, we're gonna fill in that little, that little place, make a smooth wall, because this little area right here I'm gonna make as my bathroom. I'm taking scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby, and I'm gonna use this for some of the flooring in my dollhouse. In the foam board, we went and just measured out. In each room, put a really nice piece of foam board down, and that leveled out my floors. Because when you're designing or working on a dollhouse, you have to consider the layout that you want your dollhouse, what you want each room to be. And, you know, some people specify rooms like nurseries, music rooms, craft rooms. You know, my house is going to be a basic house with a bedroom, family room, kitchen, um, bathroom. So, um, it has a place for two stairwells, and I've decided not to put stairs in them. I think they're beautiful, but they also take up space, you know, and you can use that space for decoration. So we took the foam board, took it all the way across, and filled in one of the stairwells, and we'll just lay flooring on top of that. This little area here, I think I'm going to do a little boutique closet in it, and I still haven't decided, you know, how I want to do the flooring in it. But now the flooring is in the bedroom. That's going to be my little family room area. I'm going to have a little fireplace. Um, that's going to be the little boutique closet. And then down below will be the bathroom, the dining room, and the um, kitchen. And I have, a, I have a good idea for what I want to do to the roof too. So stay tuned for that. So like I say, not a huge update, but to me to get the floors leveled is huge. And this is a little piece of carpet. This comes from Hobby Lobby. It's self-adhesive on the bottom. So I can't wait to install it. So y'all stay tuned. I'm, I'm still working on it. We've been busy here lately and haven't got to work on it as much as I want to, but we're about to get back on it. So y'all, as always, I appreciate each and every one of y'all for coming over to my channel and watching my videos. Make sure to go over and check out Kayla's um, channel. I'm gonna leave all her information below. And until the next video, y'all, I love you. I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, y'all.